Okay guys, Chatty CRC back here on the channel and today we're going to start the Impulse RC Reverb build. Got the cameras all set up here I think pretty good and the lighting and everything looks really good. So I'm going to break this into different parts just because I think that way it will make it a little bit easier for people to ask questions and for me to respond if anybody has any uh important questions to ask or wants to see anything different so we're going to start off with we have our kit here we have the main body kit arms gopro mount which we don't need right now and all of our hardware and standoffs and everything and the first thing we're going to want to do is I'll open this up here fresh clean bag of parts and I'm just gonna get all of the body pieces out because we are going to clean up the kit a little bit because they do send us a couple files for us to get in here and clean out some of the stuff that might be left over from the cutting process and generally these frames come really great anyway but since it is one of those nice premium type of frames just might want to take the extra time and go ahead and do that so that is all that i'm going to do right now is just unbox everything take it upstairs into the kitchen sink Make sure you do this somewhere where you're not going to make a mess and don't wear nice clothes because you are going to get some carbon fiber dust all over you. Also take all of your extra parts that we're not going to be using right now and put those into a larger bag so you don't lose everything. So we will be right back after I have the kit cleaned up and we'll get to work on assembling this bad boy okay so everything is dry here and looking great didn't really need a whole lot just wanted to knock off and make sure that those edges on everything were not that sharp now we're going to pull up now we're going to pull up the actual assembly manual from impulse rc's website and we're going to take eight of these insert nuts here and we are going to insert those into what they're calling the upper main plate since this is kind of divided into two parts or two sections if you will now that overlap each other a lot of the newer frame designs are going with these type of inserts to go through the arms into versus using the old M3 nylock nuts seems to be a more stable and less vibrations as well as saving a little bit of weight so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put those in right now So really the best way to do this is to go ahead and take the M by three by six bolt and put that on your driver as they say, and then just kind of take one and hold it over the hole and kind of pinch it there. And then go ahead and screw into it and let it catch. And then just start to crank that puppy down and it'll pull that right into the carbon fiber and then you can just unthread the bolt and now it's in there so I'm gonna go ahead and get all those done and be right back so when you're all said and done you pretty much end up getting something that looks like that you get this those threaded into the carbon fiber you might not be able to get these all the way in but when we attach the arms in the next step, you'll definitely pull them all through. So for the next step, what you're gonna want is you're gonna want 
your 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and these cone washers. And these are basically gonna go up through our arms. So you're gonna grab the, the bottom plate and just snake everything through like that. And then that is gonna screw right in to the holes that we just did in the top plate like that. If you really snug down on these things, you can really get at them pretty good and nothing uh, will strip out or nothing because of the quality. But when it's all said and done, all of these need to be flush with the carbon fiber and these here with the longer M12s will have a little bit sticking out because this is where your standoff screws are going to go ahead and screw on to. So when you're putting all your arms together, don't crank one down at a time. You're supposed to put everything together nice and loose and then work in a star pattern starting from the inside out. And that's pretty much what you're left with there. This thing is starting to feel super quality and super rigid. And we're ready to go ahead and start installing electronics onto it. So let's get to the motors. All right, so looking at the motor configuration here, I am going with my favorite go-to motor ESC combination for five inch and for most of my six inch builds right now, which is the Emax ES30 HVs. These run three to six S. I run five S and four S packs. So these have been my most dependable ESCs um, that I have used. I put a 330 uh, microfarad 25 volt cap on each one just to kind of smooth out the noise don't have any issues at all as far as the motors I'm running the multi-copter builder uh, Primo 2207 2450s uh, they also have these out now in a 2208 these have no problem um, loading up and spinning a six inch prop or a heavier five inch prop they've got great low end torque and they also have just really good high end just a great throttle range really smooth they're similar to pretty much any type of hyperlite motor or t motor out there um, naked bottoms they weigh about 29 to 30 grams uh, single stranded so i'll zoom in on this as much best as i can so you can see uh, really notchy nice air gap there to keep everything nice and smooth and torquey so that's what we're going with on the reverb here so a couple things I had to take a look at is the reverb comes with your basic uh, standoff that with the rubber mount for the vibration dampening and it, depending upon what kind of flight controller and stack you're going with it may or might not work it's not going to work in my case so what I did was remove the 12 millimeter bolts uh, from the inside and I actually went with some 25 millimeter bolts and you can see the stack here now how I have uh, created some space uh, for my power lead and stuff and to try to keep the flight controller in line with uh, the prop line as best as I can. I have uh, a nylon uh, nut there. I have another dampener and then this has dampeners uh, installed in it as well. This is the Joshua Bardwell uh, F4 flight controller that's uh, sold by Race Day Quads. And there's enough room underneath there if you wanted to to put your receiver or something like that to kind of save some space still don't know what I'm gonna do as far as laying out my components all I have to add inside all of this is of course the camera is gonna go up here and then I have a Unify HV and a crossfire receiver and depending upon where I'm gonna put the crossfire comes down to what I am going to do with the antennas usually I end up doing the L configuration on the back of a frame like this to maximize my uh, polarity or what would you call that? Yeah, to maximize my radiation pattern and everything like that. But with those antenna mounts, uh, Trappy said the V design actually doesn't work too bad either. So I might actually try that with uh, the Crossfire module itself. So got the motors 
uh, got the motors all soldered up to the ESCs here. Went over everything that I am using. Going to cut this video off here, and on the next video, we'll start working on the actual flight controller and wiring all this up. But I guess I do want to just make sure that everybody knows to uh, definitely check out your uh, stack and your your board that you're going to be using there because you might have to replace the bolts and you can see the black ones there versus the gun metal that it comes with um, I plan on taking another set of dampeners to put up on top here and then more than likely uh, just securing that down with another nylock nut or it's pretty solid like it is so I probably could just leave it like it is a static fit got my wires all measured out ready to go so I'm gonna go through and do that all on all of them get the motors mounted up and all that stuff but we'll continue with all that on the next video so that's gonna be it for this guys part one let me know if you have any questions talk to you later